the reason why sub-Q gives you more stable levels is because it doesn't disperse. It just sits there. Whereas within skeletal muscle, it disperses and all these lipases can work on the cell surface. Kurt, you sure. like injection protocols the way they were designed to... Generally speaking, I, yeah. I think your Tremblone idea makes a lot of sense to me, sub-Q, mm -hmm. especially if you're prone to the, to the bronchial constriction. Um, yeah, I mean, I think for most guys, if you're going to use an oil-based thing, you put it IM like it was designed and studied. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, peptides. Growth hormone is definitely much more effective sub Q. You you lose a ton when you put yep. it IM. It's not, it's it's not a, it's just not the way that drug, drug was designed. Um, right. We can also do one on the uh, another episode on the long acting supposed growth hormone too, because that stuff is trash. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would love I hate to, to say because that because people... people are making money on it, but it's trash. It's not growth hormone. Um, we'll save that for next one. We'll save that for another one. The um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I stick with the same with pills, right? I swam. I don't waste my time putting them under my tongue. And, you know, circulation is always going to go through the liver regardless. You're not really sure. saving much by doing that. And the whole theory that, you know, when you're exercising, the, the circulation is more in the muscles. It still has to go through the liver. The liver always is going to get circulation. Otherwise, it would fail. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So you're not really avoiding anything. That's, I mean, I think that there are situations, TRT, if you're using a low dose and you're afraid of needles, then sure, use, you know, 20 units of, t you know, test sub Q. But I think as you get into real cycles and bigger amounts, I mean, if you're using three CC, six CCs, nine CCs, whatever some of the bigger guys are using, they're not using that sub Q. No, you can't. Right. They're putting stuff in their adductors, their rear delt, their side delt, their quads <laughs> up high in the glute, low down <laughs> yeah. in the glute, under the glute, hamstring, wherever they can fit it. Yeah. Um, yeah I think, I think so. So the reason why I like sub-Q is because after so many steroid injections of two CCs, three CCs in my glutes, quads, lats, build up a lot of scar tissue. Yep. And then over time, it kind of messes with my mobility. You know, I can't get a full contraction anymore, extension with the lats, same with the glutes, right? And that, especially in the glutes, the scar tissue started radiating towards my knees and then I couldn't really do, yeah, because it got really, really tight. So after so many years of all these glute shots and quad shots and lat shots, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go sub Q. I don't do the crazy high doses that I used to do in the past. Right? What I'm running right now, 750 milligrams, and that's 700 milligrams of steroids. I mix that in a sterile vial, I shake it up, and then I inject about half a cc sub Q, and that seems to hold quite okay. The downside of this, if you do half a cc sub Q every single day, you create all these fat patches on your ass and that is also visible but the good thing is, is that it doesn't uh fuck my, my range of motion so literally i can grab now my upper butt cheeks and i can just feel like these little marbles mm -hmm. of steroids sitting inside now obviously it would also be within my glute or my quad if i were to inject there maybe limiting my range of motion or st structurally um you know preventing me from having the best contraction uh, possible because there's some foreign substance within the muscle um so i'm happy that that's resolved but i would never get shredded glutes with a protocol like this unless i would to inject the oil in between my butt cheeks which i cannot reach that you would know be an so interesting shot. yeah so you would still need to cut out the injections maybe two weeks before stepping on stage um if you were to do a cycle like this but then again the the, the dosages that i'm running right now would not be suitable for me stepping on stage, I probably need to double it if I wanted to show hard and dense with my body weight. Yep. Um, so I think it's suitable for guys that run like simple cycles, mm -hmm. maybe not too high, but if you if you wanna go proper cycles for bodybuilding, yes, you would have to go IM because the injection volume is just too much to do sub-Q. And, and you get extra dicey lean and you would, imagine injecting one TC sub-Q every single day I mean, you would be left with, I don't know, cellulite on your ass or whatever you inject it because it doesn't disperse properly. There's yeah. a very good study by um, a Dutch guy on the University of Maastricht or Amsterdam from uh, Kalacharon. He, he kind of diagnosed or investigated how these injection dispos disperse. So when you inject it, 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 it doesn't stay as a ball. It disperses. And then the surface mm -hmm. area increases, you get all these little fat droplets where the lipases uh, can mm -hmm. work on for the active pharmaceutical ingredient to be released. And I think 
the reason why sub-Q gives you more stable levels is because it doesn't disperse. It just sits there. Whereas within skeletal muscle, it disperses, and all these lipases can work on the cell surface, kind of liberating all the testosterone, anethate, or whatever you inject it. And then the esterases can start working on the ester. Um, so there's a difference in release time and, le and what's it called? Lead time? Not lead time. Um, there's there's a time between where the, the steroid ester is released and the ester is removed. Uh, lag time. That's, yeah, yes. Not, yeah, lag, lag time. Lag time, not lead time. Lag, lead time is with uh, delivery. Uh, <laughs> so you have lag time where, where it becomes pharmaceutically active. So with, with intramuscular injections, you can clearly measure that. With, with subcutaneous mm -hmm. administrations, you don't know that. And the reason why peptides are being administered sub Q is because there's no ester. Yep. And it's active right away. Of course, you have dimers forming with insulin, right? You have uh, hexamers and dimers where the insulin's bound uh, one or two or four together, and that kind of slows the absorption. But, you know, HCG is pharmaceutically active. Growth hormone is pharmaceutically active. Insulin is pharmaceutically active. Well, the angeli might need to metabolize because there's an HCG uh, binding domain. Um, but all the peptides are basically active right away. That's yeah. why they go sub Q because you have to create a slow releasing injection depot, whereas with the steroid esters, there's a layer of fat surrounding it and then an ester surrounding it. Mm -hmm. So you need faster absorption and more, um, how do you say this, more blood flow to the area to really yep. absorb it properly. And, and of course, we're reinventing the wheel here with subcutaneous administrations, trying to bypass that and slow the absorption. The only reason why I think it's suitable is to prevent scar tissue buildup, which structurally, mm -hmm. Uh, might fuck you up in the long run. Like I don't like the sh removal of the sh the shoulder striations. Right, I wouldn't have same shoulders as Wesley Vissers um, with striations out of you know coming out of everywhere. And of course, if you do bodybuilding shows and you have to rotate, I mean, Hadi Chupan is a prime example. Um, there's no detail there anymore, and that's that's a bit of a waste, I think. But yeah, it's 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 hard to go on a on a four gram cycle and not go intramuscular. Yep. You know, so Dean, chip in here. What do you think? Yeah, well, I, I, I agree on both sides. Um, again, it comes back to that again, the hybrid aspect of uh, uh, injection volume is always going to dictate how deep you go, in my view. Mm. Anyway, um, anything, anything like you're saying there above 0.5 of a, a cc or a mil, you know, sub Q is going to more than likely well to you, like what you see in there, because. Like the peptide example, peptides can go sub Q because they're aqueous, they're water based, mm -hmm. and they diffuse. They don't form a depot, they actively diffuse into the bloodstream. Right. That's why when someone says about um, injecting BPC 157 into the injured area, you're like, yeah, sure, some of it's going to interact in the area where you've injected straight away, but active diffusion, because it's water based, will just go into the serum blood because it's water. Oil yeah. obviously mm -hmm. can't mix with water, so you have the whole act, the side of drug delivery from <clears throat> a hormone depots. You have a, a lipo, uh, I guess, uh, phobic molecule, so something that hates mm -hmm. uh, lipophilic hates uh, water, so it likes fat. Mm -hmm. So now you've got to cleave the ester away, so it's sitting in the fatty tissue. The ester comes away, the active drug goes into circulation. Some of it stays free, some of it goes on to SHBG, albumin, and whatever else. Uh, the the absorption rate, like you're saying, with sub-Q probably might be, yeah, a little more stable depending on um, how easy it is for the phosphodiesterase, the thing, the enzymes that cleave away the ester to get at it. But most often than not, you know, one of the biggest causes of post-injection pain is someone's not gone deep enough in when they're uh, oh. injecting a large volume. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, an, an injection depth, you know, for a long time, we got guys doing glute injections with, you know, five eighths of an inch orange pins or blue pins that are just under an inch in length. Um, and that's sort of where you probably need to go to one and a half inch, which is either, yeah. you know, black or a green, something that is actually going in deep. Otherwise you end up with those hard lumps because you're you're sort of sitting between fat fascia and muscle where 
again depending on how the stuff has been made some of it could crystallize um you know it, it's it, it, like kurt said i think it comes down to preference and what the person's willing to do as well um mm -hmm. i can't say like definitively one is going to be absolutely better than the other but having smaller volumes going in daily at the beginning well, obviously when you're starting something is going to yield probably lower peak dosages or, or plasma sure. peak dosages 100%. after the injection yeah. it might but, vary between 10 to 20 percent if you the same exact trt dose if you do intramuscular with insulin syringes versus sub q insulin syringes you might go from 1200 to a thousand or maybe even lower so this is one of the reasons why my testosterone levels are reasonably low compared to the dosage that i'm using and i'm and i'm using hcg so i'm producing testosterone intertesticularly i might end up at a thousand to twelve hundred nanograms per deciliter on an hcg protocol of 500 ios three times per week sub q and 150 milligrams testosterone inotate whereas reality 150 testosterone inotate intramuscularly should bring me to 1500 to 1800 if I if I do daily sub Q or, or twice a week. So serum levels are significantly lower, but the result is exactly the same. Uh, because once the hormone is in, it's in, right? And it, it just takes longer to get to the androgen receptor, but eventually we'll get there. Um, so I, I feel results wise, it's the same, but maybe on blood work, you're like, ah, shit, my testosterone is not working. Probably because it just releases slower. I mean, it's the same way you never check blood work following intramuscular injection the day after yeah well unless you're doing you should, the same then you know that's yeah, nice uh, and high well, uh, well what i mean when it's nice and high that's the peak you're catching so if you're trying to if you're trying to see your sort of steady day to day if you're doing you know two injections per week you'd always mm. want to do it on the morning before one of the injections so that you see that you don't see that you're almost looking at the nadir point where you're getting ready for the next injection to bring the level up again yeah um but you know, if you're doing daily injections, it, that's not really going to matter because it's the same amount of drug going in at the same time every single day. So the level should be the same every time you repeat the blood work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, sub -Q steroid cycles is only for guys that do moderate dosages. And I guess the guys that do proper dosages for, for bodybuilding shows or just bodybuilder dosages in general, we just probably better to go IM because of the injection volume. Yes. But you you might still risk a, a significant amount of scar tissue. That's that's my, the only downside of doing those high cycles, you know. And then how many guys do really do deep tissue massage therapy during their cruise? Not many, you know. And even even then, when you sort of look at the scar tissue from the the injection trauma, it's very difficult to to heal that yeah. scar tissue. Um, maybe you know if you've if you've gone into it one site once or twice but if you've gone into repeated times or any sort of intervention of uh, backing off allowing the tissue to heal you're still probably going to have micro trauma or micro tears mm -hmm. to speak within the, the tissue itself um and that, you know that's one of the long-term things with injecting is that you you are going to have scar tissue whether that's you know very fibrous tissue that you're never going to get a needle in there into the same place because you've gone in mm -hmm. so many times um but similarly you know someone coming along and like i've got one here on my desk you know like a a massage tool you're never really yeah. gonna get it you're the never really gonna technique. get in like you're never gonna get in if you're breaking on your shoulder that's not gonna break down scar tissue that's deep in so people are yeah. like you know oh this is gonna break down scar tissue it's been sort of proven that you can't yeah. really but if it, if it helps improve your mobility, like what you talked with mm -hmm. Steve, you know, if your mobility is impacted, your injury risk goes up as well, or your, your day to day comfort decreases. So there's, you know, a positive side to that. Yeah. If you want to see, that, if you want to see the damage, forward. sorry, if you want to see the yeah. damage, in, like an IM injection does to the muscle, if you take an old steak that you're probably going to throw out, fill a syringe with like three cc's of olive oil and inject it into the steak and watch what it does to the tissue of the steak. It's pretty amazing to see it blow apart. <laughs> it really does it like tenderize it or? Oh yeah, yeah, just you gotta watch what it, that's what your glutes are experiencing when you put three seeds of oil in it. 